long before the age of the dinosaurs, a race of fearsome reptiles ruled the land. All but a few perished in the greatest extinction of all time. The Earth still bears the mark of their deadly dynasty. thrive here among the barren buttes and mesas of the Karoo Basin in South Africa. Nearly 2,000 square miles of sun-scorched earth. This place is no Garden of Eden. But 250 million years ago, there was another Karoo teeming with life laced with meandering rivers and swampy marshlands. This was a fertile floodplain. Summers were long and hot, winters short and wet. One day, during the rainy season, a river overflowed its banks. Muddy water spilled across the plain, dumping sand and silt in its wake. Eventually, the river returned to normal. In low-lying areas, flood water collected in small pools and ponds, attracting wildlife. Over the following week, pools became puddles, and the land quickly dried. But not before local residents left their marks in the soft sediments. baked their footprints hard as rock. Then within days, a second flood permanently sealed the tracks beneath another layer of sandstone. 250 million years later, erosion would finally expose the footprints to creatures of the 20th century. For paleontologist Roger Smith of the South African Museum, the tracks are like snapshots from the dawn of time. They capture a fleeting glimpse of the world just before the age of the dinosaurs. So fine are these floodplain sediments that they preserve the signature of an entire menagerie no longer of this earth from the ghostly trails left by tiny burrowing worms to the splayed footprints of huge lumbering beasts. Many of the track's creators have been identified through fossil finds. One ancient trail took Roger Smith on a journey back in time. I first saw it early in the morning with low angle light and I really could feel that I was part of an ancient environment. It, it made my flesh curl, it made my, my hair stand on end. I, I went down into the trackways uh, and put my four limbs into the, the four footprints and I could feel what it was like to be a dinocephalian. And here we have a superb trackway of a dinocephalian. Now, this was a large lumbering mammal-like reptile and we, can, we know from the, the body fossils that it had long straight toes and it was about two and a half meters long. So I wanted to try and demonstrate how the trackway can show us how this animal walked. 
the the front foot would come down one two three four and it swing its body through with to put down the fifth digit and one two three four swing its body through fifth digit down and through Despite the sound of its name, the Dinocephalian was no dinosaur, not even a dinosaur ancestor. It was just one of the many strange reptiles that flourished during the Permian Age that began around 300 million years ago. Previously, life had flourished mostly in the water. Only amphibians and a few primitive reptiles had ventured onto solid ground. During the Permian, all that would change. This would be the age of the reptiles. They evolved into countless species that thrived on land. For the first time, most of the Earth's surface was colonized. Yet few places preserve any record of this age. South Africa is a rare exception. Okay, I'm going to try and lever the, the skull off the rock face with my fingers. If it doesn't move, I'm going to then have to hammer it out. But we'll try and, and just, it's a slight movement. There's a, it's going to come. It's, it's coming, I can feel it move. Ice, that's out. Okay. Few untrained eyes would have spotted the tiny skull. The specimen is called Kistocephalus, or boxhead. Like the Dicynodon, it is one more representative of a reptilian revolution. During the Permian Age, one group of reptiles underwent great changes. They became more and more like mammals. These mammal-like reptiles evolved a more upright stance and a metabolism that was probably more warm-blooded. But perhaps their greatest advance appears in their teeth. In early reptiles, teeth were all the same size and shape, but mammal-like reptiles evolved differentiated teeth for specialized tasks like shredding, slicing, and grinding. This change in dentition allowed some mammal-like reptiles, like this cow-sized Rachiocephalus, to become the first terrestrial herbivores. It all to become their predators. This canine tooth was found embedded in the body of its victim. During the Permian, the deadly dance of predator and prey first spread across the land in a drama that continues to this day. In the Karoo, the mammal-like reptiles once ruled supreme. Each new fossil helps Roger Smith build a portrait of their ecosystem. Well, this is a beast called Rachiocephalus. It was a, a cow-sized herbivore. It, it grazed on the Karoo Plains 250 million years ago. Um, it, it didn't have... Uh, teeth, it had uh, a tortoise-like beak covered in a horny, sub a horny material and its lower jaw would grind the, the foliage back and forth. It's lying here with its head uh, and lower jaw in position. Whether this was actually preyed upon uh, or just died through drought or natural causes, it's difficult to say at this stage. But uh, this disarticulation at the back end where, the, where the, uh, the pelvic girdles and the legs, the hind quarters have been, have been scattered but not carried off is very, uh, is very indicative of carnivore action, the scavenging action on the back leg. There's only one candidate for the carnivore at this time and that's the Gorgonopsian. Long-legged and saber-toothed, the Gorgonopsian was fast and fierce, the first top predator on land. Roger Smith had not realized how powerful the Gorgonopsian's jaw could be until he came upon some unusual fossils. 
We were not sure whether it was capable of, of uh, crunching bone until we started picking up uh, coprolites, that's now fossil droppings uh, that contained bone. And here's uh, a, a carnivore coprolite from this area, not far from here, which uh, inside clearly contains large chunks of bone and small broken up fragments and in and around it there's this green uh, swirly material that uh, in modern coprolites, modern carnivore scats, uh, uh, would be the skin material of the animal. Gorgonopsians and their kind preyed on a vast array of herbivores, especially the abundant dicynodonts. These mammal-like reptiles ranged from cat to cow size and occupied habitats from the high plains to the river banks. Some species of dicynodonts lived in vast herds. Others took refuge underground. They dug burrows which were preserved when floodwaters filled them with sediment that later hardened. The burrow spiral architecture kept air circulating and stabilized temperature within. Here, dicynodonts lived alone or in pairs. Some, like these two, even died here, overcome by floodwaters as they slept. The hundreds of fossils unearthed in the Karoo add up to an intriguing scorecard for the late Permian. Herbivores outnumbered carnivores about 60 to 1. This same ratio still applies to ecosystems today, says Bob Barker, paleontologist at the University of Wyoming Geological Museum. What makes the late Permian incredibly exciting is this is the first time we have a modern ecosystem. We have a clearly identifiable top predator, the gorgons, the Gorgons are the, the same size, the same power, the same ecological efficiency of a modern day tiger. And you have big plant eaters too, occupying the roles of antelope and deer and hippopotamuses. And you have predators in the, in the rivers and ponds and you have small bug eaters and small omnivores. It's a modern world. Replace today's mammals with the Permian's reptiles. Picture the fearsome Gorgonopsians stalking their prey. The vast herds of grazing dicynodonts. And in the rivers, primitive crocodiles, amphibians, and fish. Across the eons, the late Permian reflects a mirror image of the living world we know today. A mature ecosystem in full bloom. But it was doomed. Around 250 million years ago, the flower of the Permian was extinguished in a sea of change that swept across the Earth. The course of evolution would be forever altered by the greatest cataclysm in the history of life. Two hundred and fifty million years ago, the Earth was a desolate place. Both on land and in the seas, all but a few species had vanished. The Permian Age had become the Permian Extinction. Plate tectonics, or continental drift, may be to blame. Over the course of the Permian Age, the Earth's continents coalesced into one giant landmass called Pangaea. Countless miles of coastal habitat were destroyed. Inland seas vanished. Great forests shriveled into lifeless deserts. Pangaea stretched from pole to pole and may have triggered a series of crippling ice ages. Or perhaps the 
Permian ended in a blaze of fire. A massive volcanic eruption in Siberia may have spewed out enough carbon dioxide to fuel a deadly greenhouse warming. Even the healthiest ecosystem would be hard hit if several of these cataclysmic events occurred simultaneously. The dazzling creatures of the Permian were resilient and adaptable, but only so far. Whatever the exact causes, with the collapse of the Permian ecosystem, the reign of the mammal-like reptiles was over. But one survivor from this group would go on to extraordinary, if brief, success. Its story remains a favorite of Bob Barker's. What happened during the extinction event? Something weird, the Lystrosaurus interlude. It looks like an enormous herbivorous metwurst with an extremely weird head. Eyes on the top of the head, great big tusks, and the whole face pushed backwards and yet had a very efficient way of chewing, grinding up tough plants. And these things go 200 to 600 pounds, and they're everywhere in great multitudes in Africa, South America, Antarctica, Russia, India, everywhere. So abundant were these strange herbivores that an entire layer of fossil-bearing rock in the Karoo has been dubbed the Lystrosaurus Zone. Across the ancient landmass of Pangaea, the Lystrosaurus spread in wild profusion. For a time, they were the largest creatures to walk the earth. No predator larger than about two pounds troubled their reign. And yet, mysteriously, after some two million years, the Lystrosaurus went extinct. The age of the dinosaurs might never have been had the Permian extinction not cleared the way for these giants. Some 95% of life on Earth had vanished, and yet there were survivors. Enough to give rise not just to the dinosaurs, but to all life on Earth today. For Bob Barker, the survivors and their unique characteristics hold the key to understanding the true nature of the Permian extinction. Okay, this is the evolutionary race. We have three contestants. We have the fast evolving herbivore, the fast evolving carnivore, and the slow evolving flat-headed slime sucking amphibian. On your mark, get set, go! For Bakker, the key factor in extinction is not an external agent like climate or volcanism, but rather the rate at which a species evolves. If you evolve fast, like this plant eater and this meat eater, you'll produce a lot of species, you'll adapt in lots of different ways, but you won't be prepared for mass extinction. Nothing can prepare you for that. But if you evolve slowly and just muddle through, not adapting, not changing, you can survive through these terrible crises. Case in point, the Permian ancestors of today's crocodiles. Why did the slime-sucking amphibian survive the late Permian crisis? A clue are gators. Alligators and crocs are living slime-sucking amphibious predators, and they're virtually immortal. Why? I'll tell you why. One thing they do not do is travel. You give a land bridge to a gator or a croc, they'll stay at home. They won't go to another continent. You give a land bridge to a saber-toothed tiger or a Tyrannosaurus rex or a gorgon, those big, fast-evolving, restless predators will spread from one continent to another. That's the most dangerous thing you can do, because if you spread, you meet new predators, you meet uh, new prey, you meet new diseases. To travel is to die in evolution. 
to stay at home is to survive. The mammal-like reptiles may have been done in by their own evolutionary success as they spread across Pangaea. For the crocodile's ancestors, sheer staying power ensured their success. But some of these creatures would leave the swamps. Shortly after the end of the Permian, a three-foot-tall predator named Euparcaria embarked on an evolutionary fast track. It would give rise to the dinosaurs. Carnivores and herbivores, predators and prey, they spread across the land. The reign of the dinosaurs was like a mirror image of the Permian age, in more ways than one. Some 65 million years ago, it too would end in mass extinction. The Karoo bristles with the bones of creatures that vanished 250 million years ago. Their fate was not unique. Of all the species that have ever lived on Earth, 99% are extinct. As scientists explore life and death in the Permian age, they just may unlock the secrets of that lucky 1%.